so if you want to stay anonymous, uh, I'll just say it for the new regulations. Um, you can log out of the webinar room and you can log in again with a fake email address and name. Um, hello, Sanota, welcome. Uh, I was just, uh, we just started and I was just saying that we have, that uh, we've just started the recording. So um, if you uh, don't want to, your uh, name to be recorded, then you can use a fake email address to log in. Um, and the recording will be made uh, publicly available and we will send you the link after the webinar. So either uh, today or tomorrow. Um, well, the webinar is about uh, open massive gamification and it will last for one hour. So until uh, four o'clock uh, Central European summer time. Um, so in this view, what you see right now, uh, you have on the left, you have the, the presentation and below that you have the chat box. Um, and in this uh, webinar, we'll have a presentation by uh, Tiberio Philippe from UNED. Uh, so Tiberio, could you uh, shortly introduce yourself? Good, good morning or good afternoon to everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be here uh, sharing with you some ideas and some reflections about uh, the methodology in MOOCs. Uh, I'm teacher, I'm kindergarten teacher and I'm also pedagogue. I'm associate professor at UNED at Madrid in Spain. Uh, I, I'm also at this moment director of the service center to support university uh, members with disabilities and coordinator of the master degree in audiovisual uh, communication of uh, public service. Uh, I research on ICTs, inclusion, MOOCs and e learning and I'm also PhD of education. So uh, as uh, Lizzie has commented, it's a pleasure for me to to share with you some reflections and, and some ideas about uh, how really we are teaching uh, uh, with uh, MOOCs. And this is the reason I, I worry about uh, all these aspects and, and questions. And so I have suggested these, these reflections. Thank you very much, Sibirio. So um, I will just introduce myself as well, because now you only see Secretariat EADTU. So um, I'm Lizzie Konings from EADTU, uh, the European Association for on Open and Online Universities. And I am involved in coordinating ac co coordinate actions for Empower. Uh, and I'm supporting expert pools like uh, op uh, Open Educational Resources and MOOCs and Quality Assurance. Uh, student support, for example. Uh, I'm also, uh, I also do coordinating actions for the excellence reviews of university e-learning e performance. Uh, and I am involved in Open Up Ed, uh, who, is one of, who is the facilitator of this webinar. Uh, and I assist in uh, various MOOC related projects such as BizMOOC and Moonlight. And uh, there will be a series of different uh, Open Up Ed webinars. So uh, next week there will be another one. And after the summer days, summer holidays, there will be more. Um, and they're all related to MOOC topics. So if you are interested, you can subscribe to the, uh, to the upcoming Open Up Ed webinars uh, on the website, on the Open Up Ed website. Um, and to warm up, we have made some questions for you. Let's see here. So here we have made a, a three multiple choice questions for you. Um, ah, I see someone else joined us. Hello, Victoria. Welcome. So you can answer the questions. <laughs> Ah, 
Yes. I see almost everyone answered. Okay. So I will just publish the results. Let's see. Now you should be able to see them. And um, so if you have any questions also during the presentation or after, feel free to, uh, to let them know in the chat and then we can answer them. So uh, Tiberia, would you like to take over from here? Okay, that's right. Well, so we are beginning. Welcome to everybody. So, uh, as you you see in the title of the title of uh, the presentation, uh, I worry about the methodology in MOOCs, and and why is the problem with the MOOCs? I think the 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 biggest, the greatest problem of MOOCs are the massive character we have. That means uh, that we, we have designed strategies to attend, to teach to a lot of people. And then uh, this massive character uh, affects directly to the scalability. Scalability means that uh, we need to attend a lot of people, a lot of a lot of students, but we can't increase the means. Especially, we can't increase the number of teachers. So, if you mm, you need to attend a lot of students, a lot of learners, really, uh, with the same means, this scalability is affecting directly to the methodology. You, you need uh, designing strategies, resources, activities that could be done by a lot of people, but with the same number of teachers, okay? Or with the same means, with the same resources. And it's, uh, from a didactical point of view, it's a, it's a problem because uh, usually, when you are in the classroom face to face, for instance, you know that if you have much more students, you have also much more work to attend them. In distance education, it's sure that we have a related problem, but not exactly the same problem. And in the MOOCs, this is one of the of the great points we have to reflect on and we have to design, because uh, uh, this scalability is affecting also the contents and then the methods and consequently the learning. If you have different method or different methodology, learning will be different. Okay, so we know as teachers, you know, uh, that. They are better and worse um, learning, and this learning has not ever the same quality. So we also have to reflect to provide a good quality in learning. This is the reason we have to attend or to reflect on some questions. Uh, for instance, uh, this scalability and, and the methods uh, you, you could observe in the MOOCs actually at this moment, uh, uh, you could find different methods of methodology. I'm asking you to reflect on, and I'm, I'm proposing you three options, okay? Do you think the, the actual the actual methodology, the methods, didactical methods, you can uh, observe in MOOCs actually. Do you think they are a contrast constructivist? Do you think they are collaborative? Or do you think they are transmissive reproductive? I'm not explaining at this moment what is con constructivist, but a constructivist point of view means that 
the students, the learners, have uh, the main role, and they have to, to discover, to construct uh, knowledge by themselves. When you have a collaborative uh, strategy, students are interacting, exchanging, they are uh, learning all together or in teams. Hmm? And when, when you have a transmissive, a transmissive uh, approach or methods, that means you have teachers explaining and learners are receiving information, data, okay? So I'm asking you, do you think actually the MOOCs are using a mostly or more frequently a constructivist approach, a collaborative approach, or a transmissive approach? Uh, to collect your opinion, I'm asking you to write the number of the answer, one, two, or three, but don't send it at this moment, okay? You write in the chat the number of the, of the answer you think is the most frequent or is actually what we are using in MOOCs. And when I say go, you send the answer, okay? That's right. So you write one if you think that the MOOCs are constructivist, two if you think that the MOOCs are collaborative, or three if you think that uh, the MOOCs are transmiss transmissive. Okay? And now you send it. Go! Well, so as you could observe in, in the chat, most of you have answered number three and some of you uh, number two, okay? So I agree with the, the, the number three, okay? I agree. I think uh, due to this, uh, this, scalability, uh, this uh, scale, scalability uh, we need and we ask for in MOOCs, most of the MOOCs have transmissive met methods, okay? And so I also think that these, these methods are not the best methods, okay? And I think we have to reflect on how could we improve our methods? Because improving methods means that we are improving learning, okay? And it's very important to offer, to, to provide, to, to transform and, and generate good learnings, okay? So gamification is an option. And I think uh, reflecting on gamification, we could also improve uh, by an easy way our methods and so also to provide better and or to generate uh, better uh, learnings, okay? So, uh, gamific gamification doesn't mean really what we are playing or that we are using games, okay? In general, when you read about gamification, that means we are adding some strategies, some procedures, some ideas, hmm, changing perhaps the philosophy of our learning to provide another kind of, of learnings, okay? Uh, uh, a nicer learning, enjoying learning, a pleasant learning, uh, agreeable, agreeable uh, learning, more attractive learning, motivating people and engaging them, okay? So here we are, these seven words that are related to gamification for me. When I think about gamification, I think about these words. So I'm now asking you, which of these words is the best word to relate to gamification for you? Okay, so we are doing as we have done before. Okay, choose the word. Which of my question is which of these words are is for you the best word to reflect or to relate to gamifications? Okay, 
so you write in the in the chat and you said you send it when i say go okay very interesting because everybody each one everybody has answered but each one has has his opinion okay only Sarolta and Fabio okay and Victoria Victoria number six that means motivating and Fabio and Sarolta uh, engaging it's related to also Amaya number two enjoy okay and Lizzie number five attractive and for Mercedes also uh, engaging okay that's right so uh, the answer is not important, but what we are seeing is that each one has uh, self, uh, self beliefs and self expectations about gamification. And it's, it's real but it, and it's nice, and so it's, it's right. Okay, so to reflect on these uh, questions, I have organized my pr presentation on three focuses uh, with a EA method, uh, as you know, uh, and we are describing strategies or ideas, reflections, focusing firstly on learners, after on teachers, and after on means. What about the learners? And as you see, uh, I'm in, in each case, I, I'm, I have selected seven ideas. The first one related to learners is that we could gamificate if we uh, propose them not only providing uh, information, but researching, okay? The, the idea is that students, learners, have to need uh, an active role not a passive role, but an active role. That means they could research, hmm? applying instruments or collecting data, collecting data from the real world, from their friends, from their neighbors, from their family, observing, taking photos, for instance. Hmm? They could also be creative. Usually our, our teaching is very uh, very scientist and so that means very 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 few space for creativity we have to think about how to provide creative opportunities for learners and also um, usually we ask for uh, written written answers okay they have to read and our reports we ask for written uh, reports, okay, but as you know, we could also ask for performances. A performance that means that the results, the answers, don't need uh, not to be written by a written way. They could be as a video, they could be uh, as a, a role playing, they could be a, a photo session, they could be a, a creative by, by an, another creative way, okay. So it's very important also to ask uh, learners to, to express, to answer by other languages, not only by verbal language and also written uh, verbal language. It's also uh, important to use uh, role playing, okay? The, the role playing is a very good answer uh, to a lot of problems and to a lot of uh, situations or exercises or activities, okay? It's also a way to collaborate or to create something in team, okay? And nowadays, to record a video is very easy, okay? It's not uh, a problem. So we have to ask them other ways to provide data to, to to provide answers and to provide also ideas. Awards. When I when I I, I am talking about awards, it's not necessary uh, spending money. Okay, it's an award when you are commenting 
in a video conference, you are commenting uh, something that the student or learner has done, has presented, uh, only uh, talking about, it's an award, okay? Or for instance, if you select the best, uh, the best answers, the best reports, or the best videos, and you, you link them in your website or in your social media, okay? So we have to think about this kind of, of awards because they are very easy to, to do and they are very engaging and motivating for people. And finally, the last idea I want to share with you or to purpose, proposing uh, to you is also the election, okay? Give the opportunity to students or to learners to elect, to decide. Uh, why are we always thinking that students or learners have to go to do everybody, everybody, each one, the same activity, each one, the same learning, okay? We have a lot of means, and after we are reflecting, we are focusing on, on means, we have a lot of means to provide opportunities to decide about which way I want to elect, okay? And it's not true that everybody has to learn the same thing. Hmm? We, can, we can develop uh, the same competence, we can learn the same topic by different ways, by a lot of different ways. So, these were, these were the, the seven ideas about the, the learners. Now I'm asking to you, uh, from these seven ways, which one do you prefer? Which one is nicer for you, is more pleasant for you? I remember then, the first one is the first one was researching. The second one, collecting data. The third one, creativity. The, the fourth one, performance. The fifth one, role playing. Sixth one, awards. And the last one, the seventh one, the seventh one, election. Okay? So, choose one of, of them. I'm asking you which is the best one for you, which is nicer for you. You write it in the chat and now you send it. Go. Well, I see you prefer the number three. We have two threes, two seven, two threes that means creativity two sevens, that, that, that means uh, two elections to decide that uh, learners could decide, okay? And uh, one, researching, and uh, uh, number five or so, that was role, yes, role playing. Okay, that's right. Very good. We go up. Uh, this was, this was uh, the first topic about learners. Now we are reflecting about the teachers. The second focus is about teachers. You know that teachers is a, an important focus. Okay, I had a small problem of connection, but now I think I'm, I'm back. Okay, so what about teachers? Teachers also, seven ideas about teachers. The first one, computation. Okay, I know that uh, in pedagogy, usually uh, or frequently, we, we are uh, very critic with the uh, with competition, okay? But competition is, is a way. Uh, what we are doing now could be uh, similar to a competition because we are comparing, we could compare the opinion of the solutions if we were solving problems, the solutions 
among uh, the answers, okay? But competition is not uh, a bad thing, I think. It's uh, a way to do also uh, gamification. Also, the other idea is to use stories. The stories, self-stories, uh, real stories, are a good way to introduce, to present knowledge, to present data, to, to analyze data, okay? So I think uh, stories could also, uh, could be a good way to, for gamification, okay? Use uh, imagination, uh, really, and, and mainly when we are scientists, we think but. We is not true. I think the best scientists have also very good imagination. Okay, and we could uh, we could think about a lot of a lot of uh, uh, good or, or great scientists who were also very imaginative. Okay, for instance, Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, uh, think about for instance. Uh, uh, Einstein, okay, and a lot of uh, a lot of scientists who were also very imaginative. So use imagination, okay. I think how you could reflect reflect how your teaching could be more imaginative, okay, using other colors, other supports, other resources, okay. Be imaginative. The dramatization, that means it's similar to the role playing, but using by the teachers to explain sciences, for instance, in, in history. Dramatization is very useful, okay? Perhaps as teacher, you have not uh, no resources to do by yourself by yourself this, uh, this dramatization, but perhaps we could do it with your students, or perhaps we, we could uh, look for, you could uh, find them in YouTube or in, in the internet, you know, there are a lot of uh, histories and, and videos, and a film. you have a lot of films, and the films are uh, in a lot of uh, a lot of times there are history of uh, a, a, a discover or of, of an event okay so we could use for instance films or videos or we could also do our uh, dramatizations hmm? dramatization is also very good uh, very good means for uh, teaching languages okay in, is you know, you know when you you teach uh, English or you, you, you teach an, another another uh, language, uh, the dramatization, the representation with real actors, what how they are communicating, okay, is a very good uh, means, okay. So I think we we have to think about the power of dramatization and in general all the audiovisual production, okay? The symbolism. The symbolism is also very easy to use, but we don't do uh, most of times. What I'm thinking about symbolism is, for instance, uh, look at the picture. This picture is a turtle and the hare. It's a fable, you know? But the fable is an example of symbols, using symbols. It's as a metaphor, it's an allegory. So that means you are using examples, comparing them with the real situation, okay? So the fable is a case, but you could use the symbolism, the allegories or metaphors in a lot of cases. For instance, when we do a, a poster, okay? It's very useful if you are able to find a good allegory that means symbols uh, pictures that uh, that are representing 
what you want to say, okay? Perhaps you, you want to explain some scientific idea, but if you are uh, able to find a good allegory, okay, uh, people is understanding uh, it uh, much more better. Okay, so it's very important to, to reflect upon this uh, possibility to, to find symbols, uh, comparisons, examples, uh, allegories, metaphors, and so on. The simulation is also very useful in a lot of fields, in, in a lot of sciences, okay? The simulations, uh, it's easy to offer them to, to, to people. You can do them perhaps uh, on real time, but you could also record them. And so it's very easy to record on a computer. And you know that the, the screen, hmm, to record the, the screen, recording the screen is very easy now, where we have a lot of tools to record the screen of a computer. And we have a lot of uh, tools and software to create uh, simulations. And so simulations are also a very good uh, uh, way to explain and to experiment a lot of learnings. And the last one is uh, giving options, okay? It, if we want that uh, learners could uh, elect, could decide, teachers have to open the field and we have to provide the opportunity to to, and, and to give options, okay? Not closing by an only a unique way, but offering different ways to develop the same competence, the same learning, but by different ways, okay? And nowadays, with the means we have, it's not difficult, okay? We have just to think about, but we won't really offer different ways for the same learning of the, for the same competence, okay? Well, so here, the seven ideas about the, the teachers. I remember, I'm asking you for them, and so I'm, I remember them, uh, the first one, computation, second one, stories, using stories, third one, imagination, Fourth one, dramatization. Fifth one, symbolism. Sixth one, simulation. And the last and seventh one, giving options. Okay? Decide which is the best one for you or which is more pleasant for you. And now, go. Okay, very good, thank you very much. As you know, there are two tools. The tool was the stories. The story is very interesting. Eh? Uh, with good stories, it's very, it's very easy to remember things. Eh? There are also two six. The number six was simulation. Simulation for scientists, uh, it's a very good uh, tool. It's uh, a wonderful tool. And there is also number three. Number three was imagination. I think also we have a lot of space for imagination. And imagination is very interesting, very interesting, very suggestive, and very powerful tool. Okay? And very, uh, very easy to use. Okay? Very cheap. Hmm? Very cheap imagine, imagination. Well, so, we go on with the last point of our presentation, that is about the means. And the means in a MOOC, it's uh, perhaps uh, the more important. And so I'm explaining better or with more details uh, the means and why. Because in our strategy, usually, in our design of MOOCs, the, the means are at disposition of people. And that, mean, that means that uh, the way we offer the means or we, we propose the means 
is directly linked also to our methods or our and consequently to the learning we are uh, uh, generating okay so also seven ideas about the means in in first place the storage medium the storage medium okay usually when you you think about a movie we have a platform or you have a, a website and in this website you upload the the videos the pdf the presentations and so on okay but think think creatively okay be creative think about why why we we do need the means in the same place okay perhaps we could we could offer them in social media for instance if you have a hashtag with this hashtag everybody could uh, find the tweets and some tweets could have the the means okay that means a link to a pdf a link to a video a link to to a website a link to a document and so on okay so it's another way to to offer it is different okay people could have documents and information guides and so on in a platform or in a website but you could also open this way for instance publishing them in social media. In Twitter, it's very easy, but also it could be in LinkedIn or in Facebook, in a group of Facebook, it could be in a page of Facebook and so on. So you have a lot of uh, spaces or, or ways to provide the means to learners, okay? The other way is also the familiarization that means you could also think about how to present the content the data by a different way for instance using a comic using a celebrity using there is no teacher here there is the scientist who is explaining some things uh, with a, a cartoon with a comic, okay? So think about uh, different ways to provide, to explain the information, the data, the problems, and so on, okay? In this case, we have Tintin explaining math, for instance, okay? Also, uh, there is a, a lot of tools to, to design, to, to produce, uh, videos, for instance, of means of presentations by different ways, okay? So it's very, it's very easy nowadays to have innovative, innovative uh, uh, presentations, innovative uh, videos also. There, I, I suggest some examples, but you have a lot of them. A Spoutoon, Prezi, uh, Video, Movely, and so on. So, it's uh, free and you can you can produce very good videos okay uh, this kind of videos uh, just you you, you know uh, with a hand uh, you, you know you look uh, a hand uh, that is writing the ideas hmm? or with a lot of movements in in Prezi for instance hmm? so check check this kind of tools because you have a lot of new tools that provide good opportunities to be innovative. Also, the case studies. I know that the case studies is a very good way to learn, but be innovative also in the case studies. The case study. A case study that means it's a real situation a real description of a case, of a situation, of a problem, of a person, of an animal, of an event, to analyze and to reflect on, to solve the problem, or to look, to analyze, to, to extract relevant data or information. Well, 
uh, but be innovative in your cases. For instance, use hot news. What are the newspapers or the TVs talking today? And find these ideas to use them in your cases, for instance, or use realia. Realia, I'm writing it there, realia is the name we give to real objects that are not, were not uh, produced uh, or designed for uh, education purpose, but you can use in the classroom. The language teachers use them uh, very frequently. So any kind of object, every, every kind of, any kind of, of animal, object, information, and so on, is, could be a very good uh, source to, to elaborate means. For instance, news of a newspaper, uh, uh, a short fragment of a video, news from the, the TV, and, and so on. So you have, in reality, uh, realia means you have a lot of means around you that could be used as resources uh, for teaching. Use also celebrities, hmm? celebrities, actors, or singers hmm? uh, could also uh, give another way to explain something in your case, okay? And use humor. Humor is very important, okay? It's very important to have sunrise to love, okay? So use humor also in your cases. The, the next idea is about the self-making. Uh, self-making means that usually we provide resources what are closed, are finished to students. But students who are adult people, young people sometimes, but in general adult people, and have an, a lot of knowledge and a, lo a lot of competencies, can also or could elaborate or could participate in the election and the elaboration, the construction, the design of the resources that you need to give them this opportunity. Okay? You, you need to give them the opportunity to, to provide and to elaborate uh, resources. For instance, in the drawings you have the the pictures you have them. There is a, a person who is writing, for, for instance, that means that the self-experience, our life, our personal story is also a very good source of knowledge. So ask the students to talk about them, that they, they, they talk about their stories their story lives, okay? The, the life story is, is very, very nice and it, it's very different from one to another one. Hmm? So give them the opportunity to talk about their life, their experiences, their events, their stories, okay? So give opportunity to students to uh, make by themselves the means, okay? Don't give them closed uh, means, okay? Let's, the, let's them to have an opportunity to do the means by themselves. And that means we also need to, to give opportunities uh, and to open the, the resources. You, we have the very, very quickly free examples. Hmm? on the stream. Uh, the, what is open-ended? The open questions hmm, means that uh, you give opportunities, but the answer is not only one good answer, but there, is, there are a lot of possible good answers, okay? So use open-ended questions. Uh, the, the, the mutilation of text. It's a very good strategy if you want that people uh, pay attention to a video or to an audio 
or to a reading, you give you a text, but with blanks. That means you mutilate the text. And this, these blanks only could be filled if you watch the video, if you listen to the audio, or if you read some text, some book, or some, uh, some website, okay? So a web page or, or with, a, with a blog and so on. So provide uh, this kind of test with blanks. The blank is a space when they have to write some words, okay? And use also the raffle. The raffle uh, is a lottery. Mm? So the, the raffle is a way to decide about uh, some information, which is a word, which is a verb, the verb, sorry, uh, which is the, the, the name I'm writing in, or I'm, I'm deciding to do uh, to, to, to do some kind of expression or, or to talk about, okay? Uh, instead, deciding directly uh, which is the word, raffle it, okay? So you write them in small piece, pieces of paper and you decide, you raffle, okay? It's a way to decide in, in some topics, okay? And it's also a way to gamificate. And the last one, the apps. Uh, you know there are a lot of apps, hmm? and you don't, you don't, we, we don't use them. Hmm? Kahoot is very well known, but you have a lot of apps uh, as Picnic, Agile, Quiz Game, and, and so on. These kind of apps usually are working on the on the mobiles, on the uh, the smartphones, and so uh, everybody uh, could uh, could use it. And usually, these kind of apps are providing uh, small activities, small tests, some questions to answer quickly, mm? and and so on. Mm? <laughs> small interactions. Mm? So uh, I, I suggest you could also experiment and 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 try these, uh, these uh, uh, apps hmm? because they are free and uh, it's also an option. Hmm? There is not one option, there are a lot of options. So experiment and, and try it. Well, and as uh, I've done with the others and we are finishing, uh, I also ask you for which is the best uh, strategy from the point of view of the of the means for you i remember the se seven options or, or topics i have uh, suggested the first one change the storage medium second one defamiliarization that mean uh, use uh, uh, other ways to present contents mm, as the celebrities and so on the third one, innovation. Fourth one, case studies. Uh, fifth one, self-making. Sixth one, open strategies. And the last one, use apps. So you write the number and now go. Okay you like i see you like case studies and also the open the open strategies the case studies also and the number seven also the apps all of them i think are are easy number fifth also the fifth the self-making very interesting very interesting so i think we have to to try and we have to experiment uh, a lot of things, okay? But it's these are also very good options. Well, and the, the last side, the last side is also to summarize in three words uh, all the presentation, okay? In relation with 
the means, I think the best word is thinking about flexibility. Hmm? Not only a unique way, but several ways, because there are always se several means, several ways to achieve an objective, to learn something or to develop a competence. Hmm? So flexibility. Uh, respect to best word is the autonomy. Autonomy means self-regulation, means deciding by themselves and doing by, by themselves. So autonomy, I think, is a, a way to summarize which is a conception of learners. And finally, about the teachers. The word for me is unpredictability. I know we have to design, we have to prepare, we have to elaborate, we have to offer, we need guides and books and so on. But unpredictability is a, a zone, a part of flexibility, okay? It's a, a, a part where teacher, uh, the teacher is deciding that we could decide, okay? You open the end. Hmm? So of unpredictability, I think it's a very good word to define how teachers also could change their way to teach, okay? So uh, I finish here. Thank you very much to all of you to share your time with us. And now uh, I wait for your questions and we could discuss or I could answer uh, with great pleasure uh, to your questions. So I listen to you. Okay, thank you very much, Tiberio, for the presentation. Very interesting and inter interactive as well. So, are there any questions? You can type them in the chat. I see my citizens typing. Uh, more people are typing. Let's see. I see a lot of people are typing right now. Ah, a question from Mercedes. When participants can choose in a flexible way or do their their own thing, doesn't doesn't it mean a lot of work to correct their contribution? Tiberio. Yes, uh, this is uh, another another question related to the learning is the evaluation, the assessment. And but we, you know that the assessment has a lot of solutions. Okay, for instance, uh, to be scalable, the problem in it is always this is the reason at the beginning, if you remember. I was, uh, I was beginning by this idea, uh, the idea of scalability, okay? Because, uh, and I was beginning by it because it's really uh, the, the problem we have at, at any time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, related to the scalability is the evaluation that is Mercedes uh, talking about. So, but we know at this moment we have also solutions, okay? And the, the solution could be, uh, for instance, uh, combining the, the assessment from the teachers and combining it with other kind of, of, uh, of assessment, okay? Firstly, 
the answer, the report, isn't uh, even individual report, okay? It could be from teams. Hmm? And, and so you have less reports to, to correct, to assess. But at the same time, the students can also evaluate other students. So there is also a way of co-evaluation, of uh, evaluation uh, between among the students, okay? That could be combined. I, I'm not saying uh, it could be the only the unique way to assess, but it could be combined, it would, could combine this way with other ways, okay? So the co-evaluation is another way. We can also use the self-evaluation. And when we talk about self-evaluation, -eval we are directly thinking about uh, a test, hmm? uh, but self-evaluation doesn't mean really test. Self-evaluation means that a person is comparing his production with another model. That could be model or explanation or, or a list of indicators to check his production. Okay, so I think we have ways to uh, also to, to assess and to give uh, feedback to learners hmm? Uh, in addition to our assessment, okay? And I think we, we could combine, but it's real, that is, that is uh, one of the problems, one of the problems, but I, I don't forget it. Thank you. Goodbye, Sarolta. She has, he or she has to go. Thank you, Tibirio. Um, okay. I see one more question. Uh, yes. Can you explain again the open point in the slide of gamification strategies on means? I didn't understood it. Okay. Open is here. Okay. Uh, we are talking. We are talking of means, and I was saying that the means usually when we provide a PDF, for instance when we provide a video, when we provide a website to our students, usually it's a closed content. That means this is a text, this is the content of this video, this is the explanation in, in the blog or in the website, but it's a closed content, okay? So if we consider that the contents could be open, hmm, that means, for instance, instead to have a severative content, we could have integrative interrogative contents. So instead to, to say what is true, we could ask and students could look for the answers. It's another way that means the open-ended question, okay? An open-ended question means that the content, the teacher, has not decided which are the contents, but he, he gives questions and, and learners looking for the answers to these questions will get the contents, okay? That's right, uh, every, every student or every learner could, uh, could get, could have different contents, okay? Because they are open, okay? The other, the other way is uh, this one, okay? This one on the right side, hmm? you mutilate, mutilate the, the text. That means you cut some words, you, you, uh, you supply some words by blanks, okay? Uh, it's not an invasion, my invasion, okay? Uh, I, I was working for a lot of uh, years in Radio Eka. Radio Eka, you, you, could look, uh, you could look for in the internet, Radio Eka. It's a, a Spanish, a Spanish uh, center for adult people, uh, mainly in Canaries, uh, Iceland. And uh, if you know it, 
you know that the materials of uh, people has to listen to the radio, but they have also their books, but their books are not closed books. They are, uh, they are books with blends. And so listening to the radio, they are writing the words in the, in the blends. But in the radio, you could do the same methods looking for uh, watching a video or, for instance, listening to, to a song, listening to, to poetry, to lis listening to an audio. Mm -hmm. It could be also uh, you, you fulfill these blanks, you would fulfill these blanks, for instance, uh, reading a book or reading in Wikipedia or reading in a website or looking for information in the website. Okay, so uh, which is the difference? The difference is if the text is closed, there is no it, 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 there is no action. It's a passive reading from the learners. But if they have to look for words, information, data, numbers to fulfill the text, they have to an, an, an active role. Okay, they have to look for, hmm? and so they, they is much is much more engaging. That's right because they have to look for, they have to write, and so on. They participate. And the, the last one, this one, the ruffles. The ruffles means that sometimes, for instance, if you, you, you are a teacher of mathematics, in a problem of mathematics, you have decided uh, for uh, some numbers, OK? For instance, the distance to, from a city to another city, the way of an object, hmm? or for instance, the time uh, that you were doing something. Well, instead, giving by the teacher, giving the, the numbers, you could ruffle them. Ruffle them means that we write them in small pieces of paper and we choose at random, we choose one of them. It's a way to, get, to, to play, that's right. So we have an, an exercise with, uh, with blanks or so, okay, of mathematics or statistics or I don't know. And, and these thick numbers, it, uh, it could be words, for instance. Uh, the English teacher, hmm? the English teacher uh, as foreign language, okay? And he is explaining how to use the adjective and, and the position of adjective with the name, okay? But instead, instead to write a, a sentence he has or she has decided, he could ruffle words and create sentences with these uh, words at random, for instance. Okay, this is a, a, a technique that was described in the 70s by Gianni Rodari. Hmm? Gianni Rodari, I'm writing, an Italian uh, writer, Gianni Rodari, okay? That means you combine at random the words and you create new ideas, new, new concepts or, or new sentences. Okay, so. It's it's game, you know. You 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 a teacher is not creating by himself or by, by herself the sentences. Hmm? He's uh, choosing words and he's creating, and so he, he can do it in real time hmm, by web conference. But he, he could she or she could do it also in, in the video. The video is also, it could be also very gamey, okay? You see, you see, Victoria? Uh, thank you very much for the explanation to video. It's very clear. Um, so um, we're already a bit over time, so I think it's uh, good to wrap up. And if there are any, uh, any other questions, we could just um, uh, close the recording and then uh, you could uh, stay, stay for a bit.
Um, so thank you very much, everyone, um, for being here today and for our next Open Up Ed webinar. Uh, that will be next week. And I will share the link with you. So this, okay, so it will be uh, the, also on Thursday. Uh, it will be an hour earlier than it was today. And um, the webinar is about why, MOOC, uh, why MOOCs while dealing with large numbers of distance learners. And uh, Hakan from Anadolu University uh, will give the, pre will give the, uh, the presentation. So thank you very much, everyone. And we will send you the recordings uh, later today, maybe still, or tomorrow. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. Bye.